Continuing on from the last video where you saw I added a border to my image, I thought about the fact that you lose some of the image when adding this. So I thought backwards and thought about how I could create a border without losing any of the image. And this video will show you how to do it. I know that these borders can be added in any, nearly any other software without losing any of the image. So I wanted to see how to do that in Luminar and I think I've found a solution for it as well. So I don't want any of my new border frame encroaching on my image. So I worked it backwards and hopefully with this video you'll see how I actually did that. Or in fact, if you stick around to the end of the video, it'll show you how to change the colour of the white border so that you can have any colour of border at all around your image. In the description below, you will find the download for the grid that you will see and also for the white border. These are easy to create though, if you want to do them yourself, but they're there anyway just to help you. It's not a totally fail-safe method, but you'll get the idea if you watch the video how it actually works. And if you enjoy this video, remember to hit subscribe because there's lots more content to come. Let's dive right in. Okay, for the first example, I am going to go in and edit a single image and I've got a couple prepared here already. So the first thing I'm going to do is add the 8 by 10 white. Click open. And as you see, that drops in. So that is actually an 8 by 10 crop aspect ratio. Next thing I'm going to do, add a new image layer. And this layer is the Luminar grid. And both of these will be available for download below. So there we have the grid. And as I said previously, you can create this grid yourself. I just created this one in Photoshop. Next one, add new image layer. And let's go for mountain. So there we have the mountain. So the last thing that we are looking to do is layer transform. It's a good idea to match the same aspect ratio with your original layer as well. Either that, it be can become stretched in some cases. So what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to lock my aspect ratio and I'm going to drag this down in size. I'm just going to drag it down to about there. And that for me, one, two, and then one, two, again, one, two, and I'm counting the big squares here. And then we've got three at the top and three at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that up and I'm going to put it in that corner. So I've got two there and two there. And I'm now going to drag this one out until it reaches two squares on this side as well. And I'm going to click done. Then I'm going to turn off the Luminar grid. And that's it. You have an even border, top, bottom, and a drop at the bottom. Should you wish to decrease that drop at the bottom and make it even all the way around, I would go back in, turn on the Luminar grid, go into crop, and then go to free, and then drag that in. The reason the smaller grid is there is to help you when you're eyeballing this. And for me, that looks about correct. So I'm going to go OK for that and click Done. Then I'm going to get back into my layers and turn off the grid. So that's it there. That's the quick way of doing this without losing any of your image. The next example I'm going to show you is to use the actual image size to create the border. So go in here, edit single image. This time I'm going to choose this image here, which is upper layer. Click Open. So that drops into the screen just to show you the size of this image. 7,000 by 4,000 pixels. Next thing I'm going to do, add new image layer. On top of that, I'm going to add the white. Click open. And as you know, that will stretch to fill the bottom layer aspect ratio. Next thing, again, add the grid. Which again stretches, and you'll notice that this time. That's one of the handy things about the smaller grid in between. And then last but not least, add new image layer and add upper layer again. Click open. So that drops in in size. Then go through the same process again. Make sure your aspect ratio is locked. Scale it down in size. And remember, although we're doing this, I did say it wasn't totally accurate. 
but what we're doing is we're looking to get it as best we possibly can. So I'm going to go for that there, which is to that line just there and then to that line there. Top and bottom is roughly about the same. I could probably move that up slightly. Yep, so that means I could bring down the size. So I'm going to bring the size down to about there, just so that I can see that line and I can see that line. Now I'm going to, I'm not going to move this across here. I'm just going to check it's okay, top and bottom. For me, that's fine for the purposes of this. I'm going to click done. I'm going to turn off the luminar grid just to let you see. So that's roughly correct, top and bottom. I'm going to turn back on the grid. I'm then going to go back into crop. I'm going to go to free. And then I'm going to eyeball this. The smaller grid helps. So I'm going to take it to around that line there on that side. I'm then going to bring this side in just to what I think is about correct. I could have created other grids in between, but I thought it was going to be too messy. So I didn't bother doing that. That looks okay. Let's just see what it's like. Click done. And then turn back into layers, turn off the luminar grid. And that's as close as. So that way I'm not losing any of the image that we put in. And the entire image size will be 7,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels, which is the original image we started with. But we've decreased the size of the image slightly to create a border. Last but not least, I said I would show you how to colour the border. So if we go back into the 8x10, as it's called here, and we go into light, and into the essentials and into light, and I'm going to drop the exposure in this. Just down to about 3. You can go further than that, you can go just a slightly less, but you need to add some form of tone or colour information into this. I'm also going to push the yellows. So there you go, straight away we have a yellow border. If I get back into layers and turn on the top one, we have a yellow border. That, to me, just looks absolutely horrible, but there may be other images that you think a yellow border is going to suit. To take this even further and to show you how to affect the border even further with colour, we, we do exactly that. We go into the colour panel. Now, you can drop the saturation. You can get into advanced settings and then use the hue and shift. And you can scroll through colours until you get the colour that you are after. None of these work with this image, of course, but it lets you see what you can do. And again, we can pull back the saturation, pull back the vibrance. And then from here, you can go into each of the individual colours and adjust them through the hue, the saturation, and the luminance. And if you want to turn the border to jet black, go back up into light, pull the shadows right back, highlights right back, contrast, smart contrast, push that, although there's nothing to contrast against as you see, it still affects it, pull the exposure right back, that's not jet black yet, go into the advanced settings and then pull the black back, let's just check to see if that's black, it is, back into layers, Turn the top layer back on. Hopefully that helps you if you want to add borders to your image. As I say, this is not foolproof adding the borders to it, but it gives you the opportunity if you wish to do it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.